Welcome to Drop the Bowtie, brought to you by your friends at American Financial and Automotive Services. Today's episode could be called Dealership Sales in the Time of Plague. We're recording this in late March of 2020. Much of the American economy is shut down in an effort to slow the spread of the Chinese coronavirus. How long that shutdown will last, we do not know. In some jurisdictions, such as New York and California, dealerships are completely closed. In other jurisdictions, like Louisiana and Maryland, all non-essential businesses are closed, but dealerships have been deemed essential and thus remain open, at least for now. The situation is evolving literally by the day, so keep an ear on the news and stay in touch with your state or local dealer association for any shutdown orders that may affect you. For purposes of this video, we'll assume your dealership is entitled to remain open. The first question is, should you? There is no easy answer here. Your customers need transportation and repairs, and your employees need jobs. Not everyone can put off a car purchase for 30 or 60 days. Around 1.8 million vehicles will come off lease between now and June, and those people need wheels. If you stay open, your customers will thank you, assuming you do things right. If your dealership does stay open, how ought you conduct your operations? From a legal standpoint, I view that question from the perspective of premises liability. Premises liability is based on the theory that when you invite the public onto your premises, you owe them a safe environment. So if a customer slips on a patch of spilled oil in your showroom, your dealership would be liable for the damages that customer suffers. In today's environment, a dealership facility equipped to slow the spread of the Chinese coronavirus is a reasonable consumer expectation. And while it would be nearly impossible to prove any one person contracted the disease from a specific location, it is relatively easy to prove that location took steps to reduce the risk. Dealerships need to reduce the risk. But how? The first step is your sick leave policy. During any outbreak, make it your policy to keep sick employees from coming in to work. How you do that is up to you, but offering paid time off in the event of symptoms or exposure sends a strong message. Paid leave might need to be conditioned upon documented exposure or a doctor's note. Whether that cost might ultimately be reimbursed by the federal government is an open question as we record this. As that becomes clear, it may be the topic of our next episode. Another step to take is to regularly wipe down high contact areas with disinfectant and document that effort. Doorknobs, refrigerator handles, coffee pot handles, and so on should be wiped down. Bathrooms should be cleaned daily and toilet handles and faucet handles disinfected. Individual employees should be instructed to wipe down their own work areas. Telephone receivers and buttons, computer keyboards, and cell phone screens need particular attention. And if you require your employees to keep their work areas clean, provide the materials necessary to do the job. You could go even further and install an antimicrobial dispenser in your HVAC system. The advantage of such a system is that it can tremendously reduce the number of pathogens present throughout your facilities. Such systems have been used in nursing homes for years. Present circumstances are making them attractive to other public spaces as well, such as dealerships. For the protection of customers, wipe down cars before test drives and deliveries. Start with the door handles, not just the driver's handle. Wipe down the steering wheel, gear shift handle, blinker arm, wiper arm, flat screens or radios, even the shoulder harness and the seat belt buckle and receptacle. Many dealerships are offering off-site test drives and deliveries to accommodate customers that don't want to visit the showroom. Remember to wipe down the vehicle when you arrive at the customer's site and bring a Ziploc bag or other receptacle to hold the wipes once you're done. Let the customer see you do it. A little showmanship never hurts, and it does reinforce that your dealership takes their health and safety seriously. That never hurts either. In addition to the wipe-down approach, or perhaps in place of it, 
Some dealers are choosing to apply long-lasting, even permanent, antimicrobial treatments to every vehicle in their fleet before a customer even sets foot in one. I'm told such treatments take 10 or 15 minutes to apply and cost about $49. There's no shortage of options here. In short, good housekeeping and good hygiene are a must. For some more considerations, check out an article I recently published on this topic called One Flew Over the Dealership. The link is below. Epidemics, even pandemics, do not last forever. We'll get through this. And how you protect your customers may be remembered long after this time of flu is a memory. If you have any specific questions about today's episode, contact your American Financial and Automotive Services representative, and I'll get them and respond as quickly as I'm able. For Drop the Bowtie, I'm Jim Ganther. Thanks for watching.